pilot with a video camera on encounters uh, one chemtrail tanker, you can tell because there's no separation between the engine and the beginning of the persistent contrail. And he goes along for a while and then he encounters yet another one uh, that's uh, dropping aerosols right alongside of him at a higher altitude. Then the pilot descends to a new flight level and a third aerosol tanker shows up. There's a passenger in an oriental uh, aircraft uh, taking pictures outside the windows of uh, aerosols that have been laid down. Here's a montage of uh, stills that have been taken over a period of time and somebody's put them together in a, to show the variety uh, of these aerosols in the sky. Uh, these are luminized for the most part. Every time we measure them, they have aluminum particles in them. This is uh, Alzheimer's in the making, uh, in some people's opinion. And here they are, um, and the diversity is not just in the United States, Canada, South America, as far down as Patagonia. We see them uh, by MODIS satellite in uh, polar region, in Europe, and the EU is being very heavily sprayed. Uh, even over Israel, um, in the Middle East, Afghanistan, in the fighting area over there, and now even in China. We never used to see them in China before, but now this is global. Even over the open waters of the Atlantic and the Pacific, the Hawaiian Islands are inundated with these things. So there you have it. They're spraying us. Chemtrails. On the internet, they are cited as proof of the government creating clouds to combat global warming. You know, maybe I'm putting a particle into the atmosphere because I'm trying to make money, or maybe I'm putting a particle into the atmosphere because I'm engaging in scientific research and trying to understand cloud physics. The following is a reading of the text from House Resolution 2977 by Dennis Kucinich called the Space Preservation Act of 2001. To preserve the cooperative, peaceful uses of space for the benefit of all mankind by permanently prohibiting the basing of weapons in space by the United States, and to require the President to take action to adopt and implement a world treaty banning space based weapons. In this act, the term space means all space extending upward from an altitude greater than 60 kilometers above the surface of the earth and any celestial body in such space. The terms weapon and weapon system mean a device capable of any of the following. 1. Damaging or destroying an object, whether in outer space, in the atmosphere, or on earth, by firing one or more projectiles to collide with that object, detonating one or more explosive devices in close proximity to that object, or directing a source of energy including molecular or atomic energy, subatomic particle beams, electromagnetic radiation, plasma or extremely low frequency ELF or ultra-low frequency ULF energy radiation against that object, or any other unacknowledged or as yet undeveloped means. Inflicting death or injury on, or damaging or destroying a person or the biological life, bodily health, mental health, or physical and economic well-being of a person through the use of any of the means described in clause or subparagraph B, through the use of land-based, sea-based, or space-based systems using radiation, electromagnetic, psychotronic, sonic laser, or other energies directed at individual persons or targeted populations for the purpose of information war, mood management, or mind control of such persons or populations or by expelling chemical or biological agents in the vicinity of a person. Such terms include exotic weapon systems such as electronic, psychotronic, or information weapons, chemtrails, high-altitude, ultra-low-frequency weapons systems, 
plasma, electromagnetic, sonic, or ultrasonic weapons, laser weapons systems, strategic, theater, tactical, or extraterrestrial weapons, and chemical, biological, environmental, climate, or tectonic weapons. The term exotic weapon systems includes weapons designed to damage space or natural ecosystems such as the ionosphere and upper atmosphere or climate, weather, and tectonic systems with the purpose of inducing damage or destruction upon a target population or region on Earth or in space. Spectral Radiography Sources program is seeking to develop a suite of laser-driven radiation sources. By using a common laser to drive these multiple sources, one can gather more information about the structure being scanned. X-rays, protons, electrons, ultraviolet, and positron radiation probe for different material defects. DoD systems are increasingly relying on non-destructive evaluation techniques to increase the serviceable life of military platforms. The Hyperspectral Radiography Sources program is seeking to develop a suite of laser-driven radiation sources. The common piece of all of these sources is an ultra-intense femtosecond laser pulse. To amplify the short pulse, one must first stretch the pulse in time by making some of the wavelengths of the pulse travel longer than others in a device called, appropriately enough, a pulse stretcher. The pulse then travels through an amplifier to boost its energy and is then sent through a pulse compressor that reverses the process of the pulse stretcher. The compressed pulse can contain over a joule of energy while still being less than 100 femtoseconds long. The resulting intensity approximates environments not seen outside the core of stars. 
These ultra-intense, ultra-short pulses will be used to seed radiation modules in the HRS program. The Hyperspectral Radiography Sources program is developing high-brightness monochromatic electron beams using a technique called laser wakefield acceleration. In this process, a very intense ultra-short laser pulse is fired at a helium gas jet. The laser pulse creates a plasma in which the electrons of the gas are separated from the atoms. The oscillating electric field of the laser pulse causes the particles in the plasma to form a wake, like a boat moving through the water. The electrons, having been separated from the atoms, ride on this wave much like surfers catch a wave into the beach. These electrons are accelerated to nearly the speed of light, with beam energies as high as 1 GeV having been demonstrated. The HRS program will turn these proof-of-principle experiments into usable electron beam technology. The Hyperspectral Radiography Sources program is developing high-brightness monochromatic X-ray beams. A portion of an intense, ultra-short laser pulse is focused on a gas jet to produce a bright electron beam. Another laser pulse is focused onto the bunch of electrons. The photons of the laser pulse scatter off the electrons, producing monochromatic X-ray pulses. These monochromatic X-rays will be useful probes for medicine and material evaluation. The Hyperspectral Radiography Sources program is developing extreme ultraviolet light sources. A femtosecond laser pulse is sent into an optical cavity whose length is matched precisely to the round-trip time of the pulse. If the phase and timing of the next laser pulse matches the pulse that traveled around the cavity, the intensity of the two will add. Eventually, the light in the cavity becomes sufficiently intense to enable high harmonic generation, in which the electrons in the atoms of an inert gas jet scatter off the atomic core producing intense pulses of ultraviolet.